Hey, something a little different this time. Um, I bought a telephone, an old telephone on eBay uh, for $29. And I know what you're thinking. Um, it looks like the bat phone. Um, so um, I wanted to see if I could get uh, one of these old telephones uh, to work with uh, my um, VoIP line, my voice over IP line in my house. I found a really good resource uh, online um, which explains how to do this and it's from a blogger uh, called uh, Matt Millman and he has a website that actually explains uh, how to do it. It references some previous uh, projects by a few other people uh, and he explains you know how he uh, how he made his own version of it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can uh, get this phone to work and uh, once it's working we'll uh, I'll show you how to build the uh, rotary dial to tone conversion that's needed to get this to work in a modern uh, phone system. Anytime. Ooh. There you go. So yeah, rings and works. So let's see, uh, let's take a look inside. Um, I just want to see if it has all the all the right things for us to make it a uh, tone dial. Um, okay, so this is uh, inside of the phone. It's actually not too dusty. Uh, yeah, actually, maybe it is. So I wonder if I should try to clean this up just a little bit. Okay, so now we know the phone works. I want to take you really briefly through uh, the, the blog that I found, which contains all the information pretty much that you need to get this to work. So this is tech.mattmillman.com, and he has a page all about building your own pulse to tone converter um, using these GPO telephones. I think G GPO is the UK post office who originally set up the uh, phone system in the UK. So um, I remember these phones from when I was growing up. Um, and he goes through a number of different um, uh, previous examples. Um, you know, he, he basically took uh, some examples from uh, Boris and some other from Arnie. I want to show you there's a quite an important diagram in Arnie's Bitbucket repository which is linked to from this website. So if you go into docs and then a rotary dial telephone wiring diagram uh, this basically uh, gives you the, the wiring diagram for what's inside the phone and you need to know this to know how to connect um, your um, pulse to tone converter inside the phone and he basically shows you which lines need to go to ground um, and which lines you need to connect to your uh, pulse tone converter. Uh, so that's really useful. Um, so if we go back, um, there's also a number of circuit diagrams here. Uh, so this is one of the, uh, this is Arnie's PCB uh, and Arnie's um, circuit diagram. And uh, you'll notice that there's a, a, a much higher uh, kind of number of parts. In, in this one uh, than the one I'm going to show you in a second, um, which is Matt's version. Um, they, there's a transistor over here, uh, there's a whole bunch of extra resistors, um, and there's this kind of interesting um, interesting voltage regulation thing over here, which is just based on a Zener. Um, so Matt's uh, version, which is simpler, I really like his design. This is the picture of his kind of finished PCB. Uh, and he actually uh, shared the PC, if you want to go and get the PCB manufactured, I just wanted to use parts that were lying around my house to do this. Um, but his, his diagram's, you know, really nice and simple. Uh, you can see no transistor, uh, the actual component count's much lower. Um, and his power supply is kind of different. Um, it's a 27 volt Zener and then a voltage regulator, a, a 78L05. Um, so I struggled to get this to work. Um, so um, I did build something like this, um, and um, I, 
I think maybe the voltage regulator that I that I was that I had lying around um, wasn't doing a, a good enough job with the voltage drop over the line because the voltage over the line on these is uh, uh, what I've seen is it, it's sometimes four, it's more often three, and it's occasionally two volts. So finding uh, uh, dropping that voltage further by going through something something like a, a voltage regulator, um, I think wasn't enough to power the, um, the 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 chip here, this AT Tiny. Um, so. Um, what I did was I tried this out and then I made my own version of it, uh, which ha is uh, simple like Matt's, but also uses a couple of Arnie's. I used Arnie's voltage regulation basically uh, instead of Matt, and that seemed to work. So I'm going to take you through that uh, right now. So I'm going to actually draw the circuit um, that I'm going to use uh, so that you have... Um, you have a view of what that looks like. So, can you see that? Yeah. So this is the AT Tiny, and it's an 85V. Now the V is important because um, you need it to be able to work below five volts, and the the the, the V is able to work. Um, I think 1.8 volts is the lowest that it'll work at. I'm not sure that's perfectly right, but um, in my experience, it kind of stops working sooner than that. Um, so then we've got one, two, three, four legs on this side, and one, two, three, four legs on this side. So um, this one goes to ground. And this is the one that the pulse tone dials come out of. So what you need is a uh, 68 ohm, 680 ohm resistor there. And then uh, these lines go to pulse. And this one goes to dial. And what you want is to have a... Um, a little um, capacitor, uh, like a 0.1 microfarad, with that just um, debounces that guy. Um, so, 0 0.1 microfarad on both of these. Um, this is the power line, so we'll get to that later. So that's VCC. Um, and over here we have the clock line. So uh, what we're going to put across the clock line is a crystal. So the diagram for this is something like that. And it's a 4 megahertz. Now 4 megahertz, not 16 megahertz or 8, because uh, for it to work at 1.8 volts you can only have a 4 megahertz crystal. And then on this side, uh, we're going to put some very small capacitors. Uh, these are just 22 picofarad on both of those, and that goes to ground as well. So, and that's a pretty normal um, crystal kind of layout for one of these. Um, so. This is the reset line over here, and that just goes nowhere, uh, not connected. Um, so on the VCC, uh, we have uh, to figure out the uh, how we how we power this thing. So one of the lines goes to a resistor that goes to a line plus, and then we have ground. So these are the exterior connections, these four here. Oh, ground just goes to ground. Um, and uh, off this, we're gonna do all of our power regulation stuff. So uh, the first thing on this line is gonna be our Zener. And this is the symbol for a Zener diode. And that goes between the power line and ground. So that's a 5.1 volt, 5.1 volt Zener. The next thing we have over here is we have two uh, 
uh, two capacitors, smoothing and decoupling. Uh, so again, this goes to ground, and this one is 100 nanofarads. And over here we have a bigger capacitor, and it's an electrolytic, which means that its symbol is a little bit different. So we'll put that on a plus there. And that one also goes to ground. And this is the really big capacitor in the original design that attenuated the um, the signal, so it actually gets quieter in the headset and you can't hear as easily. So uh, with this one, we're just going to put in a, uh, what was this, a one microfarad. So that was the largest capacitor I could put here and actually have the pulse tone dialing stuff work. Um, so much less than the 200 microfarad in the original design. I've got no idea how that one worked, but this is what is needed for it to work with my uh, VoIP phone uh, connector. So this is the circuit that I'm going to build, um, and um, let's get started. So uh, so one of the things is um, you need to build a programmer for the AT Tiny, which you can just use an Arduino for. So I have that here, and I'll show you how to do that. So really quickly, how do you, um, how to create an AT Tiny programmer using an Arduino? So uh, you need the Arduino environment, and uh, there's a sample sketch uh, called Arduino ISP, uh, which is Arduino in circuit programmer. You bring that up and program your Arduino with it. The next thing you need to do is wire up the Arduino to the AT Tiny so that you can program it. And again, there's a really great resource online called Programming an AT Tiny 85. And they take you through uh, the pinouts of the AT Tiny, how to set up your Arduino environment to do this, and then all the connections you need to know. So um, it's pretty easy. Now, one of the things that Matt did um, uh, with uh, his, his example is he actually uploaded his source code that he used, but he didn't program it in the Arduino environment. He uses the command line tools. Um, it's, uh, the command line tools are actually installed inside the Arduino environment. You just have to find them and set your path to the right location. And then you can use uh, his make file uh, to make and program um, the AT Tiny. Okay, so um, I've synced down the code that Matt gave us uh, on his website. And I needed to set the path to my AVR tools, which is actually inside the Arduino install. This means you can use command line um, tools to both program and flash um, uh, your AT Tiny. So uh, first of all, it doesn't just work on a, uh, out of the box. You need to set the right COM port, like it's the COM port on your machine that's talking to the Arduino in circuit programmer. See, on my machine, it has a, a, a pretty long number at the end. So I edit edit the make file that Matt's provided. Here's his make file, and I edit the programmer line so that I have the right uh, COM port uh, there. Uh, I, I didn't need to edit an, anything else uh, in the make file other than that um, to get it to work. Um, and then I can do uh, make and flash, and it, this will both build and then flash uh, the code into the AT Tiny. You can see here it's flashing and verifying. Now, the last step is to do make fuse. And um, one thing that's important about this make fuse step is that once you've set the fuses on the device, uh, you're not going to be able to talk to it through the programmer anymore without a little bit of extra work. And the reason is that the AT Tiny then is expecting to have its external oscillator, etc. So uh, once you've made the fuses, don't be surprised if you can't program it again because it's now, uh, it now uh, the AT Tiny is expecting something else. Um, so uh, you, you, you can bring it back, but uh, it's a little bit more hassle. So here I'm building um, the entire circuit on a breadboard. It's a pretty simple circuit, um, so you know it, it works pretty well on the breadboard. Um, but the reason to do this is because I have had problems getting these circuits to work on, on different uh, phones, so um, I wanted to actually verify that this was going to work. So you see here I'm testing the voltage and so forth. Okay, so um, I've been kind of pouring over the circuit trying to figure out what was wrong. And um, I found a couple of things that I didn't connect correctly in this, um, this diagram over here. Um, and um, one thing I had to do was the polarity was reversed. So ground versus plus line. So um, the voltage difference between those was 
uh, and it was always negative. So what I did was I, I rewired uh, this so that it was swapped. The phone works exactly the same way. It doesn't seem to care what polarity it has, but certainly the dialer cares what polarity it has because the Zener, the Zener diode um, only works in one direction. Um, so, um, so after having done that and checking the circuit quite a lot, um, uh, I've been able to get it to dial. So um, I'm going to show you um, a little uh, video of it dialing uh, and working with sound, hopefully. Uh, so just give me a second to set that up. I'm probably going to change cameras. I'm just going to hold the receiver down. Now one of the things I'm going to try uh, so you can hear the actual beep. So I'm going to take my, um, my microphone and put it down near uh, headset. So you should hear a dial tone. Now you can hear it dialing. So um, it's working pretty well. Let's unplug that. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to take the circuit and I'm going to put it onto some sort of prototype board. Uh, I'm going to have to put the IC in a socket, that sort of thing. So I don't know if you can see this, but um, so this is the dial and then this is the pulse and what it does is as you wind it up, uh, can you see that? So at the end when it's dialing that switch is closed, when it stopped dialing that this switch is open. So see that again, see how it separates and then this one is being pulsed as it goes past. So all connected and then as you let go this thing is just jiggling back and forward. All right so it's back together. Harder than I thought it would be. All right, I don't know if you can hear that. Working. So let's make sure it rings. If you want to see more content like this, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.